Hello, students. I am Edgar Bergen. And I am Charlie McCarthy. Mortimer? Yeah, yeah, and I'm Mortimer, uh, 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 Mortimer, uh, uh, well, don't you know your last name? Yeah, I, I know it as well as I know my own name. Well, uh, Mortimer, uh, concentrate. Yeah, Mortimer, concentrate. <laughs> no, it's shorter than that. Your last name is Snurd. Oh, yeah, Mortimer Snurd, yeah. On this record, I'm going to tell you the secrets of ventriloquism. I'm going to show you how to get laughs. What are you going to show us, Mortimer? I'm going to show you how to be stupid. <laughs> well, that you can do. In the following lessons, exercises, and voice demonstrations, you can learn the ventriloquist art. On this record, I have included comedy routines that you can study and use to entertain your friends. Ventriloquism is the art of producing a voice that sounds as if it comes not from the real speaker, but from some other source. The word ventriloquism comes from Latin roots, and it means speaking from the stomach. <laughs> what do you know? Paunch prattle. Do you really do that? Well, the ventriloquist doesn't actually speak from his stomach. Folks just get that impression because he speaks with his mouth nearly closed, and the voice seems to come from deep down inside, or perhaps way off outside. Incidentally, human beings aren't the only creatures who can throw their voice. You don't say my mind. The chickadee and the dove create distinct ventriloquial effects by their notes, and there's a variety of Canadian rabbit that makes a high-pitched, hard-to-locate sound. It completely fools the rabbit's enemies, who think he's somewhere off in the fields. <laughs> you know, I was talking to a rabbit the other day. He was on his way to see a doctor. I see. Why? Because he felt kind of jumpy. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That'll be enough, Charlie. This is a lesson in voice throwing, you know. Oh, yes, yes, cause, 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 cause. Uh, can anyone do it? Well, that is a question that I am most often asked. Can anyone be a ventriloquist, or do you have to be born with a special talent for ventriloquism? My answer is, to be proficient at both the close-up and the distant voice is as much of a gift as a good singing voice. But with practice, the average person can give a convincing and successful performance of ventriloquism. Uh, the average person. Well, that lets you out, Mortimer. Oh, you? Yeah? Well, I'll have you know, I skipped a grade in school. No kidding. Yeah, I went right from the fourth grade to the second grade. <laughs> All right, boys, now that's enough. The second most often asked question is, does the ventriloquist actually throw his voice? I answer this way. He does not throw his voice to the dummy and then make the voice bounce back to the audience. But he does do a great deal more than hold his lips still and move the dummy's mouth when he talks for it. For example, when I throw my voice into the next room or outside, I use no dummy. I can fool a dog. He doesn't look to see if I'm moving my lips. He hears a strange voice and starts prowling around looking for the owner. Well, tell us, O learned one, how is it done? Well, the phrase I used in writing on ventriloquism for the Encyclopedia Americana and Britannica was voice diffusion. Voice diffusion is accomplished by putting pressure on the vocal cords, making it difficult to locate the source of the sound. That is, where the sound is coming from. The greater the pressure, the greater is the effect of distance. Not so fast, Bergen. Would you drag that pass again in low gear? Well, do you understand it, Mortimer? No. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Would you care to elucidate? Oh, no, no, I'd feel fine. No, I mean, explain to Charlie what I was talking about. Oh, no, oh, I couldn't do that. I'm, I'm still working on my last name. Oh, I see. <clears throat> well, let me show you what I mean by pressure on the voice. To produce the dummy's voice, we start with a deep breath and let the air escape slowly while making a prolonged groaning sound, almost as if we were in pain. This sound is called the ventriloquial groan, or drone. It should sound like this. Uh, uh, ee. Just raising the voice a couple of notes is not quite enough. You must exert pressure, too. Now, notice the difference. Uh, not like this. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. But like this. Ah, uh, one, two, three. Yeah. Not like this. Hello there, how are you? But like this. 
Hello there, how are you? The pressure or ventriloquial drone voice, the voice I was doing, makes it difficult to tell where the sound is coming from. This is the real secret of ventriloquism. The greater the pressure, the greater the illusion of distance. Let me repeat that. The pressure on the vocal cords gives the voice a distant effect. So if you want to throw your voice into the next room or outside, you use the distant voice or greater pressure. So I say, George, are you in the next room? And the voice comes back. Yes, what do you want? I will have more to say on this subject later on. Now I want you to listen to a routine that I did with Charlie on the subject of ventriloquism. It is a comedy dialogue that you might have fun doing yourself with your little partner. And I want you to notice how I use the near voice for Charlie and the distant voice for Joe in the basement with good comedy results. Well, Charlie, why, why so studious? Well, I'm, I'm writing a book, that's why. Oh, well, I'm happy to hear that. Uh-huh. That shows initiative. Yes, yeah, sure. I'm proud of you. Yeah, and what's more, Mr. Bergen, you are the inspiration for my first book. Well, well. And what's your book about, Charlie? It's about ventriloquism. Oh, I see. Is it, uh, is it uh, the adventures with a ventriloquist? Uh, no, no, no. I'm calling it ventriloquism. It's cure and prevention. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I don't think that will sell very well. No? No, no. Well, how about calling it the ventriloquist's racket exposed? No, no. <laughs> ventriloquist's racket exposed? Yeah, including a chapter on pocket picking. Now, just a moment. I don't think that's very funny. No. Charlie, I should think that your book would be a tribute to what I've done for ventriloquism. Well, it's not so much what you've done for ventriloquism, it's what you've done to it. Oh, I see. <laughs> so you're exposing ventriloquism, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir, when the public reads the lowdown on this racket... Well, that's all, brother. Charlie, ventriloquism is not a racket. It's a profession. Yeah, sure. So is rag-picking, but it's still trash. Or... <laughs> That's about enough, young man. I'd advise you to keep my name out of your book. Oh, I've done that. In the foreword, I say, any resemblance between a ventriloquist and Edgar Bergen is purely accidental. Oh, I see. <laughs> Do you know that ventriloquism is more than 3,000 years old? Is that so? Yes, yes. Why, one of the first known ventriloquists was a Greek philosopher named Eurycles. Ventriloquists were even found up among the Eskimos. They weren't found up there, they were chased up there. No. <laughs> uh, why, you don't even know the meaning of the word ventriloquism. No. No. It comes from the Latin, ventro, meaning stomach, and loqua, meaning to speak. Speaking from the stomach, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Paunch prattle. <you> know. <laughs> That's the literal meaning, speaking from the stomach. Bergen, you sure carry a lot of equipment, don't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're not fooling me. I know how to do it. Oh, you do? Sure. I can do it myself. Is that so? Mm hmm Yeah. Well, could we, could we be honored with a demonstration? Gladly. I'll throw my voice down to the basement. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> hey, Joe. What do you want, Joey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what are you doing down there, Joe? Yeah, I see. Yeah. Well, that's very good. Continue. Uh, all right. Uh, what time is it, Joe? Joe? He didn't answer. Uh, What's the matter? Somebody must have shut the cellar door. <laughs> now, see how much fun you can have with ventriloquism? So let's go on with our lesson. When talking for the dummy, speak in the front part of your mouth with the tip of your tongue in back of the upper front teeth. I find some students have a tendency to form their words back in the mouth. This gives a garbled effect like this. A uh, one, two, three. Uh, there was an old woman. A uh, one old woman who lived in a shoe, and so forth. Now it should be up in front, of course, like this. A uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. Right up there. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. Of course, there are some character voices that can't be done in the front part of the mouth.